people who bring you Charleston Home and Design Magazine, the Charleston Home and Design Show, the Custom Home and Remodel Show, and Charleston's online home show, NewHomeCharleston.com. This is Talking About a Home. Talking About a Home is a home show on the radio, featuring interviews with local experts, home tips, trends, and ideas you need to know to make your home better. I'm Michael Blaze with Five Star Real Estate, and this is Talking About a Home. Good afternoon. I'm Tim Barkley with Charleston Home and Design Magazine, and I want to thank you for listening to Talking About a Home, a home show on the radio. In addition to our radio show, Talking About a Home, we also publish Charleston Home and Design Magazine, winner of the American Society of Interior Designers Excellence in Design Media Award, and also winner of the American Institute of Architects Charleston Chapters Honor Award for Journalism. You may also be familiar with the three custom home shows we organize, the Charleston Home and Design Show, which takes place every January, uh, the Charleston Home and Design Show on Daniel Island, uh, that happens every April, and the Custom Home and Remodel Show and Hurricane Expo, uh, which took place uh, the, just this past August. Well, today we've got a, a very special show lined up um, for you. And uh, before we get into that, uh, joining me is uh, the social media director for Charleston Home and Design Magazine, Meredith Poston. How are you doing, Meredith? I'm well. Thanks, Tim. How are you? Doing well. Um, so, Meredith, uh, we, we've got a really good show this, this week um, because we were, uh, the Charleston Home and Design Magazine team was out and about uh, last week uh, for the National National CRAN Conference, and CRAN stands for the Custom Residential Architect Network, and that's a, a group of uh, architects that um, that help homeowners with residential projects, new construction, and remodeling, and it's all part of the American Institute of Architects, and uh, and so. The National CRAN Conference took place in Charleston this past weekend, and it's taken place all around the country, San Francisco, um, Minneapolis, uh, Santa Fe, um, all sorts of different cities around the United States, and, and uh, we were fortunate enough to have the CRAN Conference um, come to uh, Charleston this year, and, and we, Charleston Home and Design Magazine, our team was out um, at, at a, a gala that they had for the architects, uh, where these, are, these architects come from all over the country uh, here to Charleston, and uh, we had a red carpet set up, and uh, um, Megan Bush, our managing editor, along with Aaron Forbes, our other editor, and uh, and you, Meredith, you were you are all out on the red carpet interviewing uh, architects from from around the country. Um, what was that like? Um, it was really interesting. Um, as you just said, uh, they were from all over the country. We also had some people from um, Canada. Spoke with several uh, architects out of Toronto. Um, I spoke with one from Honolulu. So these people really made the trek out here. Um, a couple people actually mentioned that they knocked Charleston off their bucket list of places to visit. Um, really, really nice, nice architects. Great conversationalists. Yeah, the gala took place at Hibernian Hall, uh, downtown Charleston, right next to the Mills House, and uh, um, the uh, there the there was a keynote speech that took place uh, at this gala. Um, Mayor Riley um, was was there, and uh, he spoke as well. And um, we really have to um, mention uh, one of the, one of one particular architect. Um, local architect that really was instrumental in bringing the CRAN conference to uh, the Charleston area, and that's, that's Chris Rose. And uh, he is, I don't know when he ever sleeps, he's a very, very busy guy. He, besides his um, very successful practice out on Johns Island, designing uh, many homes for, for Kiowa, Seabrook, uh, he, he does just fantastic uh, uh, volunteer work, and, and he, and, he and, and his staff at uh, Christopher Rose Architects uh, did a lot of work behind the scenes um, preparing for, for the national conference, and it takes so much work. So many people contributed to that. There were, besides the, the gala, there were daily um, uh, seminars for these architects. Um, our staff 
were um, served as docents for um, a house tour that took uh, four ho four houses that were on a tour uh, this past Friday, and then they also uh, had uh, houses open for tour for these architects on uh, that last Saturday out at Kiowa Island. And so, anyways, I just wanted to give a quick uh, mention to to Chris Rose because uh, he was so busy we didn't get a chance to interview him. But but um, Meredith, you and our our other Charleston Home and Design Magazine staffers, um, Megan and and Aaron, uh, you were all out um, on the red carpet asking these architects questions. And what 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 kinds of uh, questions were you asking? Well, this year's theme was the architecture of influence. Um, it was really about designing houses that contribute to the established physical and cultural settings. Um, so we discussed that sort of um, that sort of theme with people, sort of you know projects that centered around that, their feelings and ideas on that. Um, also, just projects that they felt really good about that they've done in the past that they were particularly excited um, to do. Another thing that um, we really discussed quite a bit was um, green architecture. Particularly, a lot of these architects were from out west. Um, you mentioned Santa Fe. That was a big area um, architects were coming from. And a lot of green architecture really big out there. And it's streaming its way out uh, back to the east. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think I think today's show you're going to really get um, uh, some insight into why it's important to use an architect, to hire an architect when you're looking to build a house or, or maybe do a, a larger model. And we asked and we asked, we asked some, some, these architects some questions about, you know, what, what the what the value is of, of having an architect on board with a project and things like that. So I think you're going to find um, today's show very, very interesting. And, and it's coming from the red carpet. Uh, that we had out, that Charleston Home and Design Magazine had out at the uh, the, the Cran Charleston uh, Gala. Um, but we've got some other business we need to take care of. Um, we've been giving away a uh, uh, free t-shirt, free Charleston Home and Design Magazine t-shirt um, by telling people to go in and uh, like us on our Facebook page. And we have a couple winners, right, from last yeah, week? Yeah, um, we've got two great winners. Um, we've got Charleston's Kalia Buchanan. Um, thank you for liking our page. We got a bunch of likes this week, and um, she was the winner selected. You won the drawing. So, uh, Kalea, we will be in touch with you about shipping a T-shirt to you. Um, also, Carol Budin with Main Street Arch uh, Antiques pardon me, uh, in Somerville. And, Carol, um, you were also a winner for sharing our photo with all of your uh, followers. And we'll be in touch with you also. Um, and your shop is just great. So, so happy to be able to share a T-shirt with you. And if you'd like to win a Charleston Home and Design Magazine T-shirt, um, all you have to do is go to our we uh, excuse me, go to our Facebook page, and uh, and and l like us, and uh, we will um, choose a winner next week and uh, get in touch with you. So we're going to be doing this continually, so you'll have a lot of chances of, to win a Charleston Home and Design Magazine T-shirt. But in the meantime, we hope you have a great weekend, and um, we'll talk to you next week. This is Erin Forbes with Charleston Home and Design Magazine here at the Custom Residential Architecture Network's National Conference taking place this weekend in Charleston, South Carolina. We're here for the opening night gala at Hibernian Hall in downtown Charleston. And I'm speaking with Andrew Passacantando. And Andrew, tell me a little bit about um, where you're from. Uh, from Morristown, New Jersey, uh, we focus on most of the architectural work local, I would say within a 25 mile radius of that area. Okay, that's great. Was there anything in your city in particular that, um, any kind of architecture that really appeals to you? Well, we, we're famous. Morristown is known for the George Washington headquarters during the uh, Revolutionary War. So a lot of our architecture certainly leans back to a type of look, very traditional. Our downtown has some very old architectural style buildings. Uh, the area itself leans towards a very traditional type of neighborhood, type of character, street front, things like that. Well, are you working on any historical projects right now? Uh, we completed a project on an old stone building. It's one of the older buildings, uh, I would say, in New Jersey. One of the houses probably dating back to about 1710. Wow. And we did an addition to that. We had to match stone, match siding, match things that really were period, at least, in style and how they would incorporate with that type of, that type of design. Yeah, that seems like it would be a little bit more difficult than just building something from scratch. Would you agree with that? 
Uh, it is. It, what happens is you have to start bringing in expert masons and people that are just absolutely the top of their field and work with them. So it really becomes a collaborative team. And when you start bringing in these uh, people that are really, really skilled, they can start steering you towards exact blends of stone or where to source wood that might incorporate that same character on the inside of the house. So it, it, it's definitely a team effort. That is really cool. Charleston is a really great place for that kind of thing, too. So I like, I like that kind of stuff. Um, what would you say is your favorite thing about being an architect? I, I started, I'd say I graduated architecture school. I worked in midtown Manhattan worked on a lot of high-rise buildings and really enjoyed that but I always had a connection to working on residences mostly from either being on construction sites and working as a framer as a kid and things like that so I always had a connection to working more with single family or you know two three family that type of thing and Cran becoming very popular now bringing in some really world-renowned speakers just really attracted me here to come here and learn that much more be amongst peers that are literally world world renowned okay that's cool well what do you like best about Charleston and its historic um, setting well we I've only been here now for a <laughs> day and a half and we've been in this building for one day but oh, the God. town itself I can't wait to really get into it and see the town so we have walking tours planned for Saturday, oh, yeah. and we're gonna we're gonna see at least five or six buildings that were recently renovated and and um, updated, and then we're gonna go to Kewa Island on Saturday. So um, I mean, from what I've seen so far, the city's stunning. I, I want to see more. I've eaten a few restaurants, but I really want to. It's great. Teeth in it. Yeah. See it. Okay. One last question. Yeah. What do you think are the issues and challenges that are facing architects? Hmm. Maybe the biggest one. Biggest one facing architects? Probably the speed buildings are needed and renovations are needed and stuff like that. And it can almost outpace the need to slow down and really do it correctly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a lot of times you see things hastily built, designed, just we got to get this thing up and ready. and. It's not built forever. It's not. I mean, this, this town, for one, shows you how, if you do it right, people are going to come here yeah. 300 years later and still love it. So, yeah, when you take your time and do it right, it, it has value for generations versus kind of rushing through things and putting stucco on it and just calling it a day. So, yeah, okay. that's a challenge. Yeah, that's definitely a challenge. Well, it was great to meet you, Andrew, and this has been Aaron with Charleston Home and Design Magazine at the Cran National Conference. Yeah. This is Aaron Forbes with Charleston Home and Design Magazine here at the Custom Residential Architect Network's National Conference taking place this weekend in Charleston, South Carolina. We're here for the opening night gala at Hibernian Hall in downtown Charleston. And I'm speaking with Bill Huey, who is actually a local architect. And Bill, um, are you working on any fancy projects right now? I would say yes, we're working on a few fancy projects, <laughs> uh, projects we're very excited about. Um, several residential projects right now and even a couple of commercial projects. Okay, great. Which one is your favorite commercial project right now? Well, right now we're uh, just beginning the uh, discovery phase of work on number one Broad Street, uh, oh. which is a signature building in Charleston. Uh, a lot of history to the building. We've been doing a lot of research here for the last few weeks and discovering some really great things about the building. That sounds fascinating. All right. Well, what would you say you like most about being an architect? I think the best part is, uh, especially with residential architecture, is being able to work with my clients, uh, sort of almost get inserted into their lives, sort of learn about them and uh -huh. how they live their lifestyles and come up with solutions that really is going to make them happy and hopefully have a home they're going to be able to live in for the next indeterminate amount of years. That's really good. Um, and I know you said you do a lot of residential work, so what would you say are maybe the top three questions that homeowners should ask if they're looking for an architect? Well, usually we have a few requirements of our clients when they come to us initially. And uh, one thing they may, may want to ask the architect in an interview would be um, what experience they have, uh, the complexity potentially of what they've done, their ability to do 
any type of project. Um, that we have some very specific questions for them as well. Uh, yes. yes. Um, what may be some of those questions that you would ask a homeowner? Well, we sit down with them and we ask their entire building program, if you will. We want to know their lifestyle, uh, if they entertain a lot, if they have children, how old their children are, if they're going to be having an extended family soon, uh, how they use their home. Those questions are very important for us to understand. Plus, we ask questions how they think they may be uh, undertaking the construction of the home. Are they going to bid to contractors? Are they going to find a contractor and work as more of a design build mode? Questions like that. That's great. That's really good advice. Um, is there any project that you're working on right now that's kind of incorporating the green or sustainable architecture? Uh, we do have, pro I would say, Every one of our projects has a degree of sustainability to it. Mm -hmm. We do have some clients who are a little more concerned about that than others. Yeah. But every project that we do, we try to build in uh, sustainable and durable products. Uh, for example, our selections of windows and exterior cladding materials. We've moved into a mode of highly sustainable, low maintenance materials. The idea is that our clients basically would, pro would probably need to keep up with their homes as far as washing them maybe a couple times a year and then they're basically maintenance free beyond that point. That's really awesome. I'm really interested in that, so. All right, last question. What would, um, what are some of the challenges that you face in Charleston in particular? Well, one big challenge that we have is uh, we answer to several uh, design boards and regulatory boards around, and actually each one of them has a different set of rules. So when we're interviewed to do a project, we actually have to find out what jurisdiction we're in so we'll know how to address the issues. And that's one big, one big thing we need to identify early. Well, that's great. Thank you, Bill. It's been really great to meet you. This has been Aaron with Charleston Home and Design Magazine at the CRAN National Conference. This is Aaron Forbes with Charleston Home and Design Magazine here at the Custom Residential Architect Network's National Conference taking place this weekend in Charleston, South Carolina. We're opening tonight at the gala at Hibernian Hall, downtown Charleston, speaking with Vatsal Desai. Vatsal, um, I see that you're not from around here. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from a western suburb of Chicago, Illinois. Awesome. Okay. And I know that there's a lot of great architecture up there. What would be your favorite building in the area? I personally dislike that question because I think architecture is such a personal choice, and I think that architecture is so determined by clients and uh, personal choice that it's hard for me to pick a particular building. Uh, but I generally like buildings that are placed well in context and uh, read well from the street, have a, uh, a good eye for detail, and I think they uh, serve a, a function in, in, in community. That's a really great answer. I like it. All right. Well, what do you like most about being an architect or being an architect student? Uh, the potential for adventure uh, and the potential for change and the uh, I think overall it's the idea that you can blend art and science and uh, try to create something creative. That's, that's really great. Okay. Um, what do you think are some of the challenges that architects are facing today? Um, I think the number one uh, challenge is um, just making our making ourselves known out there, making ourselves more accessible to the common public. Um, generally speaking, you know, we're at a custom residential conference and um, I think it, it custom residential architecture is a lot more accessible than um, the common public uh, knows about. Yeah, true. Well, I know you said you're a student, so are you working on any fun projects right now? Uh, I'm actually, I've graduated, I'm not a student, but I'm oh. a student of architecture in the sense that uh, you have to study a lot, you have to uh, practice as an intern a lot, uh, and then you have to pass uh, a lot of uh, licensing exams, and then you get to become an architect. So as far as projects that I'm working on right now, um, there is a very small ranch that uh, the client has, uh, the client basically wants to expand a second story on top. 
Um, and then there are uh, a couple of residential lots that I would like to uh, design something sustainable, something that is um, contextual, and something that uh, I find uh, or I feel is good architecture. That actually leads me to my next question. How much experience do you have with sustainable architecture? Uh, so I like to think that I have a decent amount of experience, <laughs> right. as uh, most architects will tell you that they do. Um, sustainable architecture is actually rooted in history, and uh, you know the most sustainable buildings came from back in the day. Uh, so I think if you look at a place like Charleston, um, you know the hot climate, a lot of masonry buildings um, help to soak up the sun. You know it it uh, helps to keep the interior environment uh, more comfortable and ultimately sustainability is about uh, comfort for the interior environment as well as uh, to not produce harm for the external environment uh, so you know just uh, in terms of sustainability we talk about it in, in school we talk about it in profession we uh, go to these conferences where they talk about it um, a lot of it is research-based and I think that uh, America is starting to kind of uh, get the ball rolling, so to speak. Europe is, is a little ahead of the game, and I think we're slowly but surely trying to catch up. That is great news. I love to hear that. Well, this has been Aaron Forbes with Charleston Home and Design Magazine at the CRAN Conference speaking with Vatsal Desai, and it's been great to meet you. Great. Thank you so much for uh, spending a few minutes. This is Aaron Forbes with Charleston Home and Design Magazine. I'm here with Charles Hudson at the Custom Residential Architect Network's National Conference taking place this weekend in Charleston. We're here for the opening night gala at Hibernian Hall in downtown. And um, Charles, what, what projects are you working on? Anything in the area? Um, anything that's your favorite project right now? Well, we just finished one on uh, Eagle Point. Um, 236 Eagle Point, which is a pretty nice project. Um, I really enjoyed finishing that one up. Um, we're trying to get some photos taken, so you'll probably see that. In fact, we'll probably talk to you about trying to get in the magazine if we, if we could. So that'll be good. Um, we're working on two, actually we should start two um, in November um, for Falcon Point, and we're doing several big remodels in Mount Pleasant. Awesome. Well, that sounds fascinating. Um, do you have any questions that you would suggest homeowners ask um, an architect during maybe their search, maybe they're building a home or something like that? Well, yeah, I mean, most architects, um, they, they, they do put themselves in the positions where they have to be good listeners. I mean, you hear that a lot, I'm sure, when you do interviews, everybody says you have to listen. It's true. So I would definitely um, encourage homeowners that if they start talking to an architect, you know, try to understand what big is because big to you might not mean big to me gotcha. <laughs> so if we can get those questions pulled out of you that that'd be great you know that that would help out a lot at least you know, I guess in a nutshell is the way we talk to each other just make sure we communicate pretty clear with each other okay. awesome cool well if you could design a house this is my favorite question what is what it would it include well I already did my house I designed my house six years ago and built okay. it um, as an architect I will never do it again <laughs> <laughs> I need to tell my clients that if they try to build their house um, uh, I think the, a lot of things that I did, I like open spaces. I don't have a screen porch, even though in the south I know that's kind of yeah. sacrilegious. That's shocking. Yeah, but um, the, my porch is big enough that it's, it's open, so I get a lot of breeze. So I, don't do, I don't, didn't want a screen porch. Um, no fireplace. What am I going to do with a fireplace? So uh, big open kitchen, more functional spaces. Um, not as large. I would never do, make it as large as it is right now. Uh, <laughs> right. But, you know, that's just a sign of the time six years ago. But uh, yeah. that's about it. I mean, I think I, I like what I did. I like okay. what I did. And are you with a firm or are you out by yourself? Well, it is my firm, uh, mm -hmm. Hudson Designs. So okay. I'm by myself, but I have two other partners. Um, okay. But we kind of split duty with a lot of things. But I, I am by myself. Well, that's great. It's great to meet you. And we hope that you will uh, show up in our magazine. Oh, my pleasure. This is Aaron Forbes with Charleston Home and Design Magazine here at Custom Residential Architect Network's National Conference, taking place this weekend in Charleston, South Carolina. We're here for the opening night gala at Hibernian Hall in downtown Charleston. I'm speaking with Charles McLarty. Charles, where are you from? I'm from Black Mountain, North Carolina. That's really awesome. I know the area quite well. Beautiful. It is. Beautiful mountains. 
Well, Charles, what's your favorite part about being an architect in that area? I like working with clients. I work on their homes. I work on dreams, sitting with the client, finding out what their memories are, what their aspirations are, the way they want to live, the way they want their children to live, and then working very closely with them to sculpt a house around that. It's the personal side. Absolutely, that is great. Does your firm work with primarily residential people in the area? All residential. All residential. Okay, great. And what are some of the challenges that you face as an architect in the mountain region? Is there are very much like architects have everywhere, and that is getting to know the client and find out what the client is about. I'm really client based. It's not a matter of the, uh, the topography. You know, we'll, we'll work with that. We're to do that, do that, and we have engineers on our bench. So, but it's, it's, it's the personal side. Yeah, it's very important that people, you know, get what they want. Um, are you working on any particular projects right now? Well, I am in Black Mountain. All of my projects are in the Piedmont, working on a very exciting house in, in Salisbury. All load-bearing masonry based on the work of, of Thomas Jefferson. Finishing a house in, uh, or in addition to a house in Concord, North Carolina. And this is a colonial revival addition to a very fine house from 1927. So it's keeping me busy. Oh yeah, I bet. <laughs> and if you were to suggest that someone get an architect to build their home, what would be some advice that you have for them? Word of mouth is my favorite way to go with that. If they know someone who has a house or an addition to a house done by an architect and the, they like it and the homeowner likes the process they went through, that would be a good place to start. Uh, beyond that, when you sit down with a potential architect, with your potential architect, have some ideas about what you like, what your memories are, what are significant rooms that you remember from your past. It could be your bedroom as a child. It could be your grandmother's house. Talk about that because that's what's important to you. Don't watch television and watch those shows. Uh, they're not going to help you find what's right for you. It's an, you really have to examine who you are, where you came from, where you want to go. And find an architect who will talk with you on that level. That's really great advice. Well, Charles, it was really wonderful to meet you. And this has been Aaron Forbes with Charleston Home and Design Magazine. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. This is Aaron Forbes with Charleston Home and Design Magazine here at Custom Residential Architect Network's National Conference taking place this weekend in Charleston, South Carolina. We're here for the opening night gala at Hibernian Hall in downtown Charleston. I'm speaking with Christopher Snowbird. Christopher, um, what's your favorite thing about being an architect? Uh, I think the best part of it is actually my interaction with the clients. Uh, it, architecture, uh, uh, not first and foremost, but definitely a very strong part of it is the service component. And so it's a matter of meeting people, getting a sense of what they want. Um, uh, you know, I don't sort of view myself as this god who hands down designs from above, but, exact, but actually more... We're, we're trying to understand what the client needs and, and meet those needs with our design and also all the way along, very concerned about budget. You know, uh, how, how does a project start and how do you budget a project right from the beginning so that we're all on the same page about where we're going to end up. That's really great. Do you have a particular style or anything, like a favorite feature in a house that you kind of always hope that one of your clients will pick? I wouldn't say a particular style. I mean, our, uh, the majority of our projects are, are additions and renovations of a fairly s significant scale. So what's what's nice is to be able to find a proper balance between what is the existing house offer and what are you doing as an addition so that what you are doing is both new and fresh but doesn't feel like a complete uh, uh, aberration from the house. It actually is, there's some continuity between the existing and what you're, you're actually building. So I, I, I like finding that balance between the existing and the new and having it feel both fresh but in proper alignment with the existing house. Right, and I know you said you're from D.C., 
And I know that there's a lot of that stuff kind of going on because there's the historical and then there's the new stuff. So what would you say is your favorite kind of architecture in your city? Well, in D.C., I mean, there, there, you know, D.C., of course, has a whole federal component and all the, the, monu the, ma the monumental core of the city. We work in a number of traditional neighborhoods, um, turn-of-the-century houses that were um, uh, the part of what they called streetcar suburbs that were sort of the part of D.C. And I, I really enjoy that sort of um, it, w working in those older neighborhoods. They're, 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 they're often houses that need a lot of care. They've been left uh, in, in rough shape for a while in, in a matter of uh, finding a ways to both improve them uh, and enlarge on them and make them better. So. so being based in D.C., does your firm, has your firm won any awards recently or done anything special with any particular building in the area? Well, actually... Uh, the uh, what's sort of exciting about right now is we have a client in D.C. that we've done several renovations to their house in the historic district, and they recently bought a, uh, a piece of land up in Maine, on the coast of Maine, and we are doing a new house for them right on the right on the water up there. Um, so it's it's just out of the ground. The framing is just getting rolling, um, and it's been quite exciting. Partly because we don't do many new houses, but to work with this client again, it's sort of this goes back to this service thing. Uh, There's a client who we know very well; they know us, and now here we are creating this this home for them that will be both a vacation and retirement home. So it's a very it's sort of a unique project in a unique place, and it's very satisfying to sort of uh, stretch out like that. That does sound great. Do you have any particular um, advice for a homeowner that is maybe in Charleston or? maybe moving to D.C. or in the area that you would, you know, give out to them? Well, I, uh, regarding the issue of maybe of selecting an architect to work with, I'd always, you know, I'd always talk to a few architects because you're always going to find the different architects have a different style personally, uh, professionally, how they approach aesthetics, how they approach budgets and money and things like that, and try to find one that aligns with your interests. Um, very important, uh, of course, nowadays we have websites, uh, all of us out there, so that you can, you can see the work and see if the quality looks like what you want. But then it's, you know, it's critical to sort of talk to a few, get a sense of how they work. It's a fairly complicated uh, process that we go through to actually create a design and go all the way through. So you have to sort of understand what that process is so that when you, by talking to a few of them, you'll get a sense of uh, how, they, how they do that and whether it meshes with the way you see going through the process. Right. Well, you mentioned your website. If anybody wants to get in contact with you or your firm, what would that website be? Sure. So our firm is called Hamilton Snowbird Architects. And, uh, Cynthia Hamilton is my wife. Uh, uh, so it's Hamilton, like Alexander Hamilton. My last name is Snowber, S-N-O-W-B-E-R dot com. So HamiltonSnowber.com. HamiltonSnowber.com. All right. Well, thank you so much. It was great to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you, too, as well. I'm Megan Bush with Charleston Home and Design Magazine here at the Cran Symposium. That's the Charleston Residential Architects Network, and they are holding their national conference here in Charleston this year. Um, we are at the gala tonight, and we're at Her um, the Hibernian Hall, and I am speaking with Thomas Bell as well as Christopher Yeely. Um, both are architects um, out of Arizona. How are you guys doing today? We're Good. doing great. Wonderful. How is the trip here, and what do you guys think of Charleston so far? Uh, the flight was a little long, but Charleston's been great. It's, it's very beautiful. It, yes, it's very um, historic, and we're anxious to see more of it. Okay, wonderful. Um, back home in Arizona, what kind of work does your firm do? Um, we do everything from high-end commercial to um, clubhouses and even some commercial work. Right, do you boys work collaborati collaboratively on projects? Yes. Okay. We actually work together on many um, high-end projects. Do you have a favorite one that's going on right now? Ooh, that's a tough question. You know, I don't, I don't think so. A lot of them are very good. Um, probably one of the most favorite ones that I remember doing was a contemporary house in uh, Sedona. Okay. It's very cool. Each of the each of the houses develop. It's separated into three separate pods, each being a separate living area. For instance, one area is the master suite, and then there's a central core space with the kitchen, the great room, and then there's a separate space for guest suites as well as the garage. And the cool part about this is the way it relates to the topo. It's separated with a series of glass bridges over natural washes, and each each. Uh, gl each, each living pod has a large glass facade, so you can look out and make a direct connection with the beautiful area around it. How cool. That seems like such a beautiful place to live. Um, 
Have you guys won any awards recently for that project or any of them um, that you've done in the near f in the near past? Um, last year we won um, three Gold Nugget Awards, which is a builder award or I forget exactly it what type of award it is. Excellence in building. Excellence right in building, yeah. So we won three, um, one for our project in Pebble Beach, um, another for a house that I helped work on in uh, North Scottsdale, and I forget where the third one was. It located. was uh, Market Street Kitchen in DC Ranch Marketplace. All right, very neat, guys. Well, if anyone who's listening to this interview wants to maybe learn some more about your work or about your firm, um, do you guys have a website that they could go to? Yes, it's uh, phxarchitecture.com. Thank you so much, guys. This has been Megan Bush with Charleston Home and Design Magazine at the Hibernian for the Cran Symposium. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is Meredith Postum with Charleston Home and Design Magazine here at the Custom Residential Architect Networks, aka the Crans National Symposium, taking place this weekend in Charleston, South Carolina. And we're here for the opening night gala at the Hibernian Hall in downtown Charleston, speaking with architect Eddie Strong from uh, Mesa, Arizona. Is that correct? correct. And uh, so is this your first time in uh, Charleston, Eddie? Actually, this is the second time I've been in Charleston. Uh, were you here for some an architectural uh, event in previously, or just for fun? Or? Uh, a number of years ago, I came and visited my grandmother, who lives not too far away. Oh, well, great. Well, um, glad to have you here. I hear wonderful things about the uh, design in Arizona. Um, what kind of design does your architectural firm uh, focus on? We focus on custom homes in the Scottsdale, Phoenix, and North Scottsdale area, and all different styles of homes. Well, great. Um, what project are you currently working on? Do you have anything uh, kind of noteworthy or kind of focused? We have 46 lots in a subdivision called the Village at Paradise Reserve, and we're doing all of the homes in there, and they're all multi-million dollar homes. And we have homes in Silverleaf at DC Ranch and Mountain Shadows and a number of homes in other areas in the, in the Phoenix area as well. Well, those are some great names you guys have for your neighborhoods. Um. <laughs> Yeah, we have uh, a wonderful, a wonderful place to live there in, in the Phoenix area. Um, well, so what uh, do you like most about your job as an architect? The fact that we get to work with people in the space that they live and spend the majority of their life in. It's not just a building, it's their home. It's where they live, it's where they raise their families. It's a very large part of their lives. That probably would be pretty fulfilling, you know, on a multitude of levels. So, yeah. Well, I hope you enjoy your time here in Charleston, and thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you. It's a wonderful place, and we're happy to be here. I'm Megan Bush with Charleston Home and Design Magazine here at Hibernian Hall for the CRAN Symposium. That's the Custom Residential Architects Network, and this is their national conference being held right here in Charleston. Right now, I'm speaking with Ellen Perko, who is an architect out of Boston. How are you doing, Ellen? I'm just fine, thank you. Wonderful. Um, can you tell me, what do you think about Charleston now that you're here? I absolutely love Charleston. I've never been here before. It is such a walkable city and the architecture is fabulous. Oh, I bet you're loving it. I, this is my favorite city in the world and I know it doesn't quite compare to Boston in its vastness, but I still love Charleston. But um, tell me this, back in Boston, back home, what kind of architectural work does your firm do? Well, I come from a larger firm, which is sort of atypical for residential architects, but um, we do everything from single-family residences, multi-family residences, um, corporate interiors, urban design, and multi-use buildings. You've got your hands in a little bit of everything then. Um, do you have like a favorite project that you're working on at the moment? Um, I have several favorite projects that I'm working on. Um, we're in the middle of construction of a project in Wellesley, Massachusetts that is a multi-family residence, 25 condominiums with some retail space, some underground parking, and we're real excited about that one. They've already sold 22 out of 25 of the units. Goodness! It's really exciting. So Absolutely. Be, it'll be done in May of uh, next year and then we're just starting a residence on the Cape that will be a guest house that will support a main house and we're real excited to start something new. Yeah, I bet so. Um, tell me this, what kind of struggles do architects face today? Um, just any struggles that you kind of come across in your field? Well, we are really tied to the economy. So when the economy is doing well, architects are often doing well as well. Um, when the economy goes south, 
hiring an architect can sometimes be a luxury. So it really is market driven. It is. Um, even when the economy is not so great, what do you, what would you say to homeowners who are kind of on the fence about whether they should hire an architect or not? What difference does it make? I think it makes a huge difference to hire an architect. I think whether you're a middle income person, someone from the high end, or even um, we've done a lot of affordable housing, there's value that an architect brings. We look at things differently. We think of the whole project and we love to problem solve so it's really a lot of fun for us and we try to make it fun for the people we work with. Oh, good. Um, well, you guys have problem solved I'm sure all over Boston and have you won any awards for any of those um, projects that you've completed? Recently we got an honorable mention for the John Clancy Award which is a sustainable design award for one of our affordable housing projects and we're currently up for a People's Choice Awards for one of our houses on Plum Island. Neat, congratulations. Thank you very much. Well, wonderful, thank you so much for being here tonight Ellen and for taking time out for us to interview you. Pleasure to meet you, thank you very much Megan. Thank Thank you. This has been Megan Bush with Charleston Home and Design at the Crayon Symposium. This is Erin Forbes with Charleston Home and Design Magazine here at the Custom Residential Architect Network's National Conference taking place this weekend in Charleston, South Carolina. We're here for the opening night gala at Hibernian Hall, downtown Charleston, and I'm speaking with Enoch Sears. And Enoch, where are you from? From Visalia, California. That's really awesome. Is there any kind of special architecture in California that's your particular favorite? You know, California it has a lot of different styles of architecture. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm a fan of more contemporary styles and not mimicking what was done in the past. So, you know, in California, it's a lot, it's a lot newer construction. I was remarking how nice it is to be here in Charleston and to see these buildings that are 150 years old, you know. Yeah, they are old, that. Um, <laughs> Is there any special project that you're working on right now that incorporates something that you really love, like sustainable energy or that modern style that you mentioned? Oh, golly. Let's see. Uh, yeah, there's, there's one project that I'm doing now, which is a luxury house up in the mountains. And uh, I like doing these projects just because they're up there in this picturesque setting, you know, kind of away, um, off the grid. That's really awesome. It's been a while since I've been to the mountains. What would you say is your favorite thing about being an architect? Uh, let's see, I would have to say the ability to uh, be creative and just uh, something, that, something that may last for a while, something that people inhabit. Okay. That's a good answer, yeah. What um, are some of the challenges that you face as an architect in California? I would have to say the number one challenge is the bureaucracy of getting plans approved. Now we know that those laws are there to protect the public and as architects, as an architect I definitely agree with that, but there's a certain line beyond which it's no longer safety and it's just red tape. Okay. If you could design your own dream house, what features would it include? My own dream house would probably be a yacht on the water. I like that idea. This is a good place for it, too. Well, this has been Aaron Forbes with Charleston Home and Design Magazine, speaking with Enoch Sears from California, and we thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate it. I'm Megan Bush with Charleston Home and Design Magazine here at the Crayon Symposium. That's a custom residential architects network. And um, this is held, um, their gala is held this evening at the Hibernian Hall, downtown Charleston, and I'm speaking with Jane Freder Frederick. How are you doing, Jane? I'm fine. Jane, can you tell me, you're not far from home, I hear you're from Beaufort, um, how does it feel to be in Charleston as opposed to Beaufort? Oh, it's great, I always love coming to Charleston. No, you can't beat it, you really can't. Um, tell me this, what kind of work does your firm do? We do all custom residential work, so the CRAN Symposium is really great. We, we, this is our third um, symposium to attend, and so it's really nice being close to home, so we brought our entire office. <gasps> Lucky ducks they are. Um, when um, you are designing a house, do you have any favorite features that you always put in or that you always hope that the homeowners want? I'm just a sucker for great tile. I love <laughs> to go to tile um, showrooms and 
really fit, like Artistic Tile, I love that brand. They have some really nice things. And then um, new Ravina mosaics are just to die for. So I always try to see if I can get a cu customer to use those. Um, what's a current project that you're working on? And does it have some of that awesome tile in it? Um, yes. We've, well, we've got a lot of projects. We're, we've been spreading out some. We've got a project in Mississippi, which I think we'll have some new Ravina mosaic in. And then we've got a um, bunch of projects in Buford County. So we do a lot there. We um, do some. Um, looks like we're going to be doing one up in Swansboro, North Carolina, which is close to Beaufort. Hard to say, hard to say when you're from Beaufort. <laughs> I bet so. Is it spelled the same? It's spelled the same, yes. Oh, goodness. I would have confused that for sure. Yeah. Um, this evening, um, you guys are going to be listening to a keynote speaker. Um, do you know anything about the keynote speaker? Yes, he's the one that, um, he was started New Urbanism probably 25 years ago. Um, the project that most everybody is familiar with that he I guess his signature project was Seaside in Florida, okay. uh, where the Truman Show was filmed. <laughs> How neat. Yeah. Um, well, anyone listening, if they're interested in an architect out of Beaufort, can you tell them how they can get in, t in contact with you? Yes, I'm Frederick and Frederick Architects, and we're f-farchitects.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much. This has been Megan Bush with Charleston Home and Design Magazine, speaking with Jane Frederick out of Beaufort. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. This is Meredith Poston with Charleston Home and Design Magazine here at the Custom Residential Architect Networks, aka the CRANS National Symposium. It's taking place this weekend in Charleston, South Carolina, and we're here for the opening night gala at the Hibernian Hall in downtown Charleston. And I'm speaking with the arch architect, John Dick, um, and he is from Santa Fe, New Mexico. And uh, how are you doing, John? Good, great. It's uh, I've never been to Charleston before, so this is... A highlight for me because it's one of the, the cities that have been on my bucket list as it were uh, so it's great I, I, I love I love walking around uh, it's it's a pedestrian city and uh, I really enjoy it well and so it is living up to your expectations oh very much so yeah um, I think probably exceeding them um, for me as an architect the variety of architecture the variety of houses and public buildings are, uh, it's just wonderful, and yet they, they all sort of respect the context of the scale of uh, Charleston. It's a very walkable city, it's a very easy city to get around, and uh, it's pedestrian friendly, and that's really great, as is Santa Fe, where I, you know, where I uh, hail, hail from. So the two cities are quite similar in that, they've, that they have that nice character. Well, and so you say that uh, they're both pedestrian cities. Um, are the buildings similar in Santa Fe? Is there a uh, kind of design that um, you see recurring here that you also would see in Santa Fe? They're quite different in that uh, in Santa Fe, it's, you know, adobe his, uh, structures. You know, it comes from the historical vernacular is really making, making houses out of mud. Whereas here in the east, on the East Coast, it's a much different uh, tradition of building types and building materials. However, the scale is what's the same. The scale and the spacing of the buildings, the widths of the streets, uh, the public places that are nicely articulated, the nice parks and that kind of thing, that is what is similar. So uh, that's what really makes these two cities special. And as you may know, the two cities are always on the top of the most popular cities to visit for tourism uh, in the country. There's typically Charleston, Santa Fe, New York, and San Francisco. Those four tend to, you know, trade places in the top four or top five. And part of that reason, I think, is that uh, tourists find it so easy to get around and, and is, you know, really very, very pleasant experience, you know. Well, so um, what kind of designs uh, does your firm focus on? Um, is it residential for, uh, you know, those kind of walkable areas or...? Um, we do, our, my office does focus on custom residential. We do a sm modest amount of commercial. We're doing a chapel right now, for example. But yes, we, I do primarily uh, custom residential. And it's mainly, at the moment, a combination of either renovation projects right downtown, which I imagine, you know, I've seen as walking around here in Charleston that there's a number of projects that are under re renovation. Um, and then so we're doing some renovation projects and we're doing uh, freestanding from the ground up new homes on the city perimeter that have a bit more room a little bit more acreage and you know up in the hills that takes advantage of the high desert views 
and so those are the, the houses that tend to be a little bit larger and uh, we have a little bit more freedom in kind of spreading the, spreading the house out and allowing the landscape to intertwine with the architecture. Whereas our renovation projects and a lot of the projects I would imagine here in Charleston, there's an urban context that you have to sort of respect and be part of. You're part of a fabric when you're downtown Charleston. Whereas f with some of my work, yes, I'm part of the fabric of downtown Santa Fe, but as you get out of town, it's more the issue of how does the house respond and interact with the landscape, the natural landscape and the views. So it's a whole kind of different problem or, or design task to address. And, it's, and so when those houses that are more out in the landscape, it's all about how natural light comes into the building for me, light as a form defining element uh, and, and really opening up the house, pulling it apart, if you will, instead of being tight like it a lot of houses in downtown Charleston, for example, they have to conform to a, a fabric or a pattern, whereas I have the freedom in, in Santa Fe to pull the buildings apart and allow the landscape to intertwine and, and react and, and really be part of the landscape, the, the big open desert wide panorama landscape that you guys don't have here, but it's, you know, it's pretty cool. It's, it's nice to work in that context. When we do have some, you know, uh, some people have the Martian ocean views from their sure, homes. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned in Santa Fe um, that big landscape and really, you know, opening it to the uh, outside air and everything. Um, is that kind of your design style, signature style, or do you have a signature style? I don't. I don't have a preconceived notion of style. It's more thematic, I would say. So uh, I, it, that may be more just a linguistic argument, but I, I don't prescribe a particular style, but I, I do respond to, or I, I, my design is sort of directed by blurring the distinction between interiors and exteriors. Doing big, you know, window walls, uh, lift slide doors that pocket into walls that totally disappear, even on the corner, so that, so that the outside can really be brought in and the inside out. We have covered what we call portals, you would call porches, right? Where we're standing right now, uh, that you can you can go out and be outside, be covered, uh, and yet be a little bit part of the landscape. And all of my clients really love that idea of opening the house up to the exterior. Well, and that leads me just to one more question. Um, so, do you uh, do a lot of work with kind of like green or sustainable uh, type design? Um, you know, working with the landscape. Um, you know, being so conscious of that. Oh yeah, uh, we've been doing that for. Well, since I started the office in 96, what, 18 years ago, it's a foregone conclusion that, you know, sustainability is here to stay. It's, it, it's so, uh, by default, we're doing not only, you know, rain, rainwater harvesting off the roof, but geothermal heating, solar design. Of course, in Santa Fe, at 7,000 feet up in the desert, we have, I think, 340, 50 days of sunshine. So not taking advantage of solar is, seems you know, ridiculous, almost criminal. So, yes, we're, all of our work, we're known for design, but in the background, we're doing all kinds of uh, sustainable work. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned that Charleston uh, was on your bucket list, and we're so glad you got to come here. And um, actually, Santa Fe is on mine, so I hope I get to come to Santa Fe and see some of your designs someday. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's great talking with you. All right, thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks. This is Meredith Poston with Charleston Home and Design Magazine here at the Custom Residential Architect Networks, a.k.a. the Crans National Symposium, taking place this weekend in Charleston, South Carolina. And we're here for the opening night gala at the Hibernian Hall in downtown Charleston. I'm speaking with architect Max Gunther. Um, and Max, you're from Honolulu, Hawaii, aren't you? Yep, I came all the way for this. <laughs> is it your first time in Charleston? Well, I was fortunate to be here 20 years ago, but it's... Uh Wonderful to see it all again and really, you know, get deeper in my appreciation of what's here. Well, welcome. And um, so uh, what kind of design does your firm focus on? Well, uh, in Honolulu, we have a 15-person firm that does both residential and commercial architecture. I've uh, been there about 25 years, though, mainly specializing in custom residential. Well, um, that's... A great place to be working. Um, do you do a lot of uh, work that incorporates the landscapes? We do. We, um, our biggest landscape feature is the ocean and most of the homes we design are close to the ocean or so a lot of awareness and acknowledgement of uh, 
the impact on home design. So does that mean that you incorporate a good bit of like green sustainability type designs into your work? Well, certainly that's a growing awareness in Honolulu. Yes, we do. And uh, we, especially in low location, need to consider a limited resources in all that we do. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So um, is there a current project that you're working on that has you just a little extra excited or one that you've worked on in the past that you just enjoyed immensely extra? Well, you know, it's, it's um, custom, designing custom homes is always a thrill. Our clients are wonderful. And I guess uh, doing projects by the ocean, but doing them in a way that's, that's traditional, that's comfortable, that's uh, really something that makes the client feel at home in a tropical ocean environment is uh, anything to that and is uh, exciting for me. Yeah, well, I just uh, really hope you have a great time here in Charleston and appreciate you coming all the way from Hawaii for this. I'm sure that uh, that's, you know, a big difference in temperature, kind of, probably a little bit. But, um, yeah, I just hope you enjoy your time here in Charleston. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'm Megan Bush with Charleston Home and Design Magazine, and I am here downtown at the Hibernian for the CRAN, that is a Custom Residential Architect Network's National Symposium. And right now, I'm speaking with Reggie Kone. How are you doing, Reggie? I'm doing fine. Thank you very much for asking. Oh, wonderful. Reggie, where are you from, and what brought you to Charleston? Why'd you decide to come here for the symposium? I flew all the way from Folsom, California, believe it or not. And I used to live on the East Coast, and I have a big, big fan and I've always been interested in working on historic homes and Charleston is, as everybody knows is one of the most wonderful homes with a large variety of different styles of historic homes so I wanted to come back here and feel and touch them once again. Well we are glad you're back. Can you tell me what firm do you work for and what kind of um, what kind of work does that firm do? I'm a sole proprietor, uh, Kone Architecture. I have been working on historic homes for most of my practice although now I'm in California and there's much modern architecture there. But it's nice to have the background of the principles of tra traditional home to apply to modern architecture to make it a little bit more um, important and more of a theme. Uh, so it's been very, very informative to sort of listen to the speakers how, in, how to relate historic practices and methods into modern homes, which is what I'm working on in California now. That is so neat. Um, do you have a, a favorite project that you've worked on back in California, maybe combining that historic feel with the modern feel? I do. I am actually um, just completed a, fo a home on a square in a historic area of, of California, downtown Sacramento. And although it's a historic area, uh, the builders, who are the specification, um, the spec builders, wanted to make it young and it, in, intriguing to young, younger buyers. And a lot of the younger buyers are looking for more modern features. So we had to sort of be a little bit more eclectic with the interiors of that home. Absolutely. So if, um, if we have some Charleston residents who are maybe looking for an architect, what advice would you give them? What questions should they ask um, during their search? Um, really f interview at least three architects, um, look at their work, um, ask them what styles they like, and, and, and let them sort of direct you after you tell them your program. Um, try to feel at ease and trust them once you select your architect because architects are trained to be good, good listeners and also to be sympathetic to the styles of the area that they're building in. Absolutely. Well, how can our listeners um, and viewers, or I guess not viewers this time, but how can our listeners get in touch with you, um, you know, if they wanted to bring in an architect from California or if they were moving to California? Uh, the AIA is a great a great resource, AIA.org, and just, you know, Google in your or type in your area that you're looking for. Like Charleston has this very strong AIA branch, so it's, it's good to sort of go to that, that website. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I have been speaking with Reggie Kone at the CRAN National Conference here in downtown Charleston at the Hibernian. Thank you. Thank you very much. I enjoy your city. It's beautiful. Thank you. I'm talking about a home. Talking about me and you. The things we'll do or say to home. You've been listening to Talking About a Home, a home show on the radio. Talking About a Home is brought to you by the publishers of Charleston Home and Design Magazine and the organizers of the Charleston Home and Design Show and the Custom Home and Remodel Show. To make contact with any of the companies featured today, 
Visit NewHomeCharleston.com, Charleston's online home show, and home to over 200 local home-related companies motivated to work with you.